Welcome back to Peace, Love and Tarot. This reading is for Sagittarius, Sun, Moon or Rising. Sagi, this is your intuitive tarot reading for May the 4th to the 17th. Uh, it's a two-week reading this time around. I've been a bit sick, so I'm doing a fortnightly reading for you just for this time. Um, what we have for you here, we've got the You're Already Doing It Oracle card, and we have Kriya behind that. We have the Empress, the Queen of Cups, the Devil, Five of Cups, Eight of Swords, and Strength. So, really, really strong theme here of the universe um, aligning or guiding things for you so that you can get back into the flow of life, back into the place where you feel like you're swimming with the current of the stream again, instead of against it. And it's when you're in that state of flow, that's when, you know, ideas come to fruition. You can create, you can manifest, you can shift things in your life, you can attract that job, that partner, and all that sort of thing. So... That is a, a really beautiful energy that is waiting for you to move into. But we also see, you know, some opposing energies here with the Devil, Eight of Swords, Five of Cups, that there is potentially something that stands in the way or blocking that, some kind of toxic situation or, um, you know, a releasing of the past or uh, a releasing of, you know, maybe your own sense of um, keeping yourself small that needs to be released so that you can step into this really powerful, abundant energy. You've got the strength on your side this week, Sagi, to make that happen. So before we go to the tarot, let's just look at these oracle cards. So Kriya, yeah, I just love the artwork on that card. It's really beautiful. Um, but Kriya stands for effortless flow. So this is, you know, it even uses the analogy here in the book. I'm just looking at it now. It says, life feels like a river that you're graciously flowing down with ease. So this is about you stepping into that, you know, stepping into the current where you can just attract and magnetize what you truly want in your life and that you don't have to you know push anymore that you can just surrender and trust and that's when you attract what you desire in your life that is absolutely the energy of the empress who is just fertile and abundant and waiting you know to help you um, birth your greatest um, possibilities into the material realm and we have the you're already doing an oracle card here as well so it says that whatever process you're working this week it's already moving you in the direction of this. But I do feel that that process includes, obviously, the release here that we see of that um, devil energy. So I will just read that one out for you before we go to the tarot. Stop overthinking. Keep facing your true north. Do not question things too much. You're on the right track and you're facing the right way. It's happening and you're closer than you think. You're exactly where you need to be and things are moving at the perfect speed. Do not rush it. Now is not the time to be impatient. Now is the time to walk steady. There is no rush. What you're building is being built. What you have planted soon will blossom. With every new day, a new brick is being laid. You have come a long way. The foundations are steady. Now all that is needed is for you to trust and keep walking forward. Beautiful. So, you know, it's really saying that everything is playing out in divine timing at the moment. And this is the right time for this to go, you know, for this to, to happen. I mean, I am seeing that devil energy here, but I feel like there was probably a life or karmic lesson in that. And you had to stay in that in a certain, for a certain amount of time in order to get that learning. But now it is the time to release it. So we'll start there. We've got the devil and we've got the eight of swords. So clearly we have a situation here that has kept you bound in some way or kept you stuck. Now, devil energy can come in so many different forms, guys. You know, it can come in the, um, you know, the toxic friendship, the toxic job or situation at work, you know, the corporate politics, that kind of thing. It can be a sense of codependency, whether that's in relationship, friendships or work. It could be dealing with addictions, your own addiction or that of a family member or a partner. It can be, you know, debt or financial issues. But whatever it is, you know, together here with the Eight of Swords, there is that feeling of it keeping you small, of it keeping you stuck, of it keeping you maybe in a little bit of a poor me or a victim mentality or lowering self-esteem or that sort of thing. So that's why we really, really need to release it because when we're sort of having those negative thoughts, we can really end up in a self-perpetuating cycle where we really start to, you know, attract more of that same energy. And if you look at that person in the Eight of Swords, you know, they're bound around the intuitive centers, you know, around that third eye, the heart, the gut. 
So it says that, you know, over time when we stay in toxic situations and we're sort of, you know, swimming against the current, that we had that metaphor in the oracle card, that we can disconnect from the higher self. We can, you know, shut down intuit our intuitive centers so we can't hear the wisdom of the body. And, um, yeah, so obviously that's, that uh, stops us from being able to, you know, make those decisions from an intuitive place. Um, you know to move forward. Sorry to get a bit distracted there. I was going to say something else about that, but it's gone for now Yeah, oh, yes, that's it. So yeah, when we're our intuitive centers are shut down and often we start operating a lot from the ego and we'll talk about that too um, With the strength card, but the devil also, you know, is a big card of, of the ego It's you know about being disconnected from our sense of spirituality and higher self and operating from you know a really different place um, it can be an illusion in our life, you know. We think a job or a relationship is one way, but really under the curtain there's something else going on. But in the devil card, you know, we see the lovers here at the front, and although they're ch chained to the devil, those chains are actually loose enough so they could actually free themselves and walk away, but they're choosing to stay. So there's often this reminder with the devil energy, you know, what toxic situation are you actually willingly playing along with or staying in because there could be you know a payoff that you're getting for the cost of staying there that's greater to you in that moment so for example that could look like staying in a relationship because you know financially um, it's easier and you know you can have the kind of lifestyle that you want but obviously you know it's not the relationship that you want the same could be said about work you know staying in the job because it gives you the the salary or the good commute or something like that but you're not happy and you know it's toxic in other ways maybe it's burning you out I mean devil energy definitely links to that sucking of the life force energy that's why he has the bat wings there and it's not sustainable over time obviously it can lead to sickness and, and unhappiness and that kind of thing so and obviously shutting ourselves down and living in the mind that's why we absolutely need to release it and you have the strength and courage to do exactly that this week. So the strength card for me, you know, it kind of links to that devil energy in, in terms of, this is about um, taming, taming demons within ourselves, or maybe it could be someone else's demons as well. Um, in the strength card, the lion signifies our ego or our shadow side or that of somebody else, and the angel is the higher self. So it's about bringing those, those sides into equilibrium, into balance in order to move forward. And it's when we kind of, you know, acknowledge that, you know, maybe ourselves or someone else does have a, a shadow side or, of course, we all have ego, but it's about working together with that. That's when we, un, you know, unlock or unleash that infinite potential. And I just notice here we do actually have two number eights in this reading as well. So this is a sense about, you know, personal mastery this week, mastering your emotions, mastering your way of being stepping up and being direct and asking for what you need in your life and also releasing what doesn't serve you. And with the, the Five of Cups, there's this reminder that once you do release this situation, you know, we really want to get on and move forward and not lament the past. The Five of Cups shows somebody who's, you know, a bit focused on what has been lost, what hasn't materialized, what hasn't met expectations, the disappointments, you know, and I really feel that we need to step away from that. Otherwise, we're really still staying chained to that devil energy. Because this water or wine or whatever it is in these cups is already soaked into the earth. There's no getting it back. You know, the past it doesn't exist anymore. It's only the present moment. And it's when we understand that all there is is right now. You know, that's when we can, you know, drop that cloak of, of depression or negativity because it's generally... You know, only when we connect to the past that we feel like that, when we feel the disappointment. You know, and we see here, you know, this person is so focused on the past or the losses that they don't see the perfectly good opportunities that are right behind them. So there's that reminder of, you know, we've got to let it go and be in the now because there are new opportunities waiting. That's the Five of Cups energy. So, and if you can do that, Saji, I mean... Empress and Queen of Cups. The Empress is probably the biggest card of promise in the tarot. So there is real promise of new beginnings, new manifestations, new desires here for you. 
Um, the Empress is, is the sense of being, you know, fertile and abundant and she's able to deliver. She is able to birth into the material realm those desires that are truly on your heart. Unlike, you know, the devil situation, you could have been dealing with somebody who, you know, was all talk or promise and no delivery. Well, now you're stepping into a time where, you know, you really can birth things into the world. So it could be a new business idea, could be a new romantic partnership. It can even be physical birth, babies, that kind of thing as well. And together with the, you know, the Queen of Cups, I mean, we have such strong divine feminine energy here as well. So the Queen of Cups, for me, in this situation talks about, you know, reconnecting with your emotional intelligence, with your sense of compassion, becoming grounded and emotionally stable again, maybe after a period where you haven't really felt like that. You know, the Queen of Cups is somebody who can stay, you know, unshakable and grounded when things get tough. And she holds her emotions in that beautiful gilded cup. And she, you know, she, she it's up to her when she lets them out, when she processes them. She doesn't allow them to control her. This is you stepping into a place of personal, personal mastery, of greater control, where, you know, you're not relying on external forces to control you. You know, you are releasing yourself from the darker energies. And with these two Divine Feminine Energies too, it could be a time to take some deep rest this week, to really tune into your you know, female or nurturing side, whether you're male or female. Because it's from that place, you know, where we're well rested and we're in that rest and digest energy, not in fight or flight, that's when we really become magnets for what we desire. That's when we can truly create and you know, attract the experiences that we really want to in our life. So... Beautiful energy, you're moving back into the flow, back into the, you know, swimming with the current instead of against it, Saggy, but just need to ensure that we release what needs to be released first and then we really let that go and we don't keep connected um, to it. So I'm just going to draw a couple of keywords to close out the reading. Perseverance, yep, okay, one more. Oh, I'm giving. Okay, so perseverance, you know, some of you may need to persevere a little bit as you're going through this situation. Just keep moving forward, you know, I guess perseverance is, you know, like in this Five of Cups, there could be the, um, the pull to reconnect to the past or reconnect to that devil energy, but we've got to persevere, we might need to go through a little bit of a difficult time, but, you know, what's coming in is far greater. And giving, you know, give to yourself, you know, give to others. Um, you know, make sure that you are, you know, staying in a place of balance this week and really, you know, work on giving yourself what you need. The Queen of Cups in particular, she's giving herself that self-love, um, that compassion and that type of thing to really, you know, rebalance herself. So that could be something um, you need to do as well. Or just, you know, simple acts of kindness and giving to others as well can often, you know, allow that energy to flow back to you as well. Okay, Saji, I'm going to leave it there. I hope you enjoyed the reading. Um, do keep in mind it's a general reading, so it won't be for everyone. Um, leave me a comment. I'll read them all, and I'd love to know, you know how it's playing out in your daily life. And I'll see you back here next week for another reading.